The Bishop Ola Wale and Bishop elect Mrs. Tino Ola Ola Afe are the presiding bishop and co pastor of the Household of Faith for All Nations, a ministry commissioned by God to save the lost, empower the saints, and make a difference. The ministry's headquarters is located in Smyrna, Georgia, in the United States. God called his servant, Bishop Ola Ofe, and said, Come and join me in my harvest. The harvest is plenteous and the labors are few. Since then, God has used his servant, Bishop Ola Ofe, and his wife around the nations, from city to city, bearing the everlasting gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of our Lord continues to flow through them from the throne of grace, undiluted with power signs and wonders and miracles. The poor are made rich, the sick are being healed, the captives are delivered, the lame walk, the blind see, sinners are saved and saints are empowered, and the name of Jesus is glorified. What more do you need to come and partake in what God is doing? You will partake in unlimited breakthrough, total healing, financial freedom, complete deliverance, restoration, favor, and a total life change. Miracles and signs and wonders. You can also partner with us online. Join this chariot of faith and you will have a brand new life. God will rewrite your story. For more information, visit our website at www.hoffen.org or call 770-805-9100. All it will take for what you want to happen is for you to truly desire a change. You need to earnestly want a new life. Things can be different. You can experience a change in your life. You can, your life experiences can be altered. If you will wholeheartedly desire such a glorious transformation. All these things we are talking about can happen. I know you might begin to imagine that it sounds too simple or too good to be true. Yes, it is. Too, it sounds too simple and feels too easy to think of. But I want to tell you the process is not easy. If you truly desire to change your experiences in life, you should be willing to pay the price for it. You should be willing to make the necessary sacrifices and adjustment required to experience the kind of change you want, except you want to be on the same level. You should be willing to gladly go through the demands of such change and transformation that you desire. I want to announce to you, beloved, there's always a price to pay for victory. There's always a price to pay for success. Transformational change does not happen by itself. It doesn't happen on its own. It has to be initiated at a cost. The basic difference between those who succeed and those who fail is that while the people who succeed are willing to pay the price for their success, they are willing to sacrifice to make necessary adjustments, fulfill the demands of their success. Those who fail do nothing. Even God, our God himself, does not promise us something for nothing. Hmm. Glory to God. Something is going to change in our lives. The Bible says concerning our Lord Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That means he's our year sick. It's our example. It's a look unto him. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. 
He said there was a joy that was set before him. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 3. There was a joy that was set before him. But before that joy can be a reality, he had to endure the cross. Hebrews chapter number 12 verse 2. I beg your pardon. He had to endure the cross. He had to despise the shame before he could sit at the right hand of the Father. And yet, he is our example. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. Brethren, beloved, joy he set before you in 2015. But we got to be willing to pay the price. We got to be willing to sacrifice the necessary sacrifice to be able to get to the throne that God has kept for us. I've come to realize that life's greatest deception is wanting something for nothing. There is nothing as something for nothing. If we all desire a change in our lives and situation, we need to make a firm resolve and make commitment to pay the price for the change that we desire. Even the sciences will tell you that every object remains in a uniform state of motion except an external force is applied to it. Until there is an enforcement of change, everything stays stagnant. God is not here to deceive us tonight. God is here to prepare us and equip us and to motivate us, challenge us, inspire us to go for the great things he has in stock for us. Amen. Let me point out to us that God creates opportunity for change for every one of us in our lives. God always creates opportunity for change. God creates environment of possibilities. But not everyone embraces the opportunities. As we get ready to enter the new year, a whole lot of us are excited about the transformation process or the transition process. And it's a good thing to really be excited about the transition because that implies that God is giving every one of us a fresh opportunity. God is making available a fresh start. God is giving us opportunity to dare new things, dream new dreams, set new goals, and is giving us the same starting point. Nobody has more days in a year than anybody. So God is bringing us to the same starting point again and said, it doesn't matter what has happened in the past. Your story can change. You can outrun those who outrun you in the year coming past. You can overcome your challenges. So it's good to be excited about the transition process. But the shocking reality is that change of year does not change anything by itself. Other than reordering the clock and turning over the calendar. I'm sure we have all heard this saying that time by itself changes nothing. Although things can change with time, time in its own self does not change anything. If anything is going to change for good around us and for us, we must embrace the responsibility to initiate such a change. Pay the price to enforce the change. God creates the environment. He makes new possibilities, new opportunities available to us. But we must learn to seize the opportunities and apply ourselves vigorously if we want to experience something new. If we do nothing with the opportunity that God creates for us, we're going to remain on the same level, but God forbid that 2015 December meets any of us the same way we are this year in the name of Jesus. I want to decree and prophesy by the, by the year December 2015, you'll be at least a thousand times bigger and better than where you are right now. I'm not hearing your amen, church. I say I'm not hearing your believing amen. amen. Yeah. 
there was a there was a scenario in scripture. Jesus once walked by a blind man called blind Bartimaeus. And I want us to read that scenario before we let's read that scripture before we get into something here. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46. The Bible says, and, it came to, as, and, and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man and said unto him, Be of good comfort, rise. He called thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered unto him, What would thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. This man, we just read his account so shortly. This man, according to scripture, has been blind for so long. His condition has so attached himself to the, the man that it became his first name. And notice what they call him, blind Bartimaeus. It was though that his condition became his first name and, and his first name became his middle name. He has been going through identical challenges year after year. He sat by the wayside according to scriptures. Daily begging. Sometimes he was discouraged. Sometimes he felt depressed. Sometimes he felt dejected. Sometimes he felt rejected. He, was, he felt abandoned. He felt refused, confused, perused. And he could not do anything. Failure and disappointment was trailing the life of blind Bartimaeus. But I believe deep within himself, he had an intense desire for a change. He wanted a modification in his lifestyle. But in the midst of it, Suddenly, I believe he has an intuition that if things are going to change around him, he can't continue to blame people for his situation. He can't continue to get angry with people who pass by and drop him sometimes uh, 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 a quarter, sometimes a penny. Sometimes they just look the other way and they drop nothing in his, in his bowl. He embraced this responsibility within himself that he must learn to seek opportunities and seize opportunities and embrace the possibilities that can come his way. Amen. So on the day that Jesus passed through him, you will notice that he, Jesus passed him and Jesus didn't really say anything to him. Jesus didn't touch him. Jesus didn't speak to him. Jesus just created an opportunity for him. Jesus created an environment for him to be able to experience the change if he truly desired it. But I love what he did because he didn't sit there to complain and murmur. What sort of bad hand has life dealt me? Why should I be blind? Why should I be born blind? Why is my situation so pathetic? Why is everybody moving on the highway and I'm sitting on the highway side? Blind Matthias chose to embrace responsibility. He chose to initiate his desire. Blind Matthias knew that if anyone will, could help him, if anyone could facilitate his desired breakthrough, his transformation in life, if anyone could heal his situation and restore what he has lost, it was Jesus. Amen. So when Jesus passed by, he says that that was an opportune moment that was beckoning on him. A miracle was calling his name. That was a possibility calling his name for a change. Was he going to sit there and continue to bemoan his situation or to complain or to feel inadequate? No, blind Bartimaeus chose to initiate the change. He began to cry out to Jesus. Jesus didn't 
call him. Jesus didn't touch him. But he said, Jesus, all I needed was this opportunity, this opportune environment. The fact that you are passing by me, I know that my story can change. The fact that you just passed, you created an opportunity, a new environment. Because before now, my environment was vague. Before now, I was helpless. But now that you are passing me by, my story can change. So he began to cry out for divine intervention. He called on to Jesus for divine intervention. He began to call on Jesus. And brethren, I want to tell us that calling on Jesus is what prayer means in our day and time. God said, call on to me and I will answer you. Hmm. Blam Bartimaeus is here teaching us a lesson that friends' prayer can change things. If you will choose to stop blaming men and begging men, walk waiting for their consent, because when he began to call on Jesus, men told him to keep quiet. Men told him that he was disturbing everybody. If, 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 you, if you will choose to stop, walk waiting for the consent and the approval of men and regarding your desire and begin to look unto God and begin to cry out, stop getting bogged down by people's opinion of your, of your relationship with your God, some might say, you pray too much, you holler too much, you shout too much, you serve God too much, can't you just reduce it, can't you just diminish it, blind Bartimaeus said, well, 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 I thank God for your opinion, but if your opinion could change my life, it will have changed something in me, but your opinion has not helped me, I have passed by, you have been sitting here all my life, and I'm not going to remain in the same rut, I'm not going to go through the same struggle, year in, year out, I'm not going to remain on the same level, I I want to change and I have to initiate it. If nothing is changing around me, I got to make a move to initiate a change around me. God is speaking to somebody here because your story is about to change. You have been listening to our very own presiding bishop, Bishop Ola Wale Ole Ofe of the Household of Faith for All Nations, a man anointed by God. We believe that this empowering word has blessed your heart. Welcome to Life Changing Testimonies. It is indeed my pleasure to bring to you today's Life Changing Testimonies. The God of Hoffman is blessing us most definitely. As we listen to the testimonies of these individuals, you will see why this great commission is doing such wonderful work in the city of Smyrna, Georgia in the United States. Here is the testimony of Deaconess Helen Otuvo. Praise God. Saints of God, our God is a good God and his mercy endures forever. Last Sunday, a sister testified of how God blessed her with a car. I connected with her testimony because I was believing for my own car. By Thursday that same week, God miraculously blessed me with my own car. I returned all the glory to God. Amen. As we continue with life-changing testimonies, here is a testimony from Sister Lisa Green, you can see testimonies continue. Praise the Lord, saints of God. I'm full of joy and excitement. During the turnaround conference, I came with so much pain in my body. I'd had one surgery and the doctor said I might need to have another one. But during the conference, the God of turnaround touched me and I received my transformation immediately. All the pain in my body is gone. I can bend now and run and climb the stairs again. I give God all the praise and thanks in Jesus name. Amen. Life-changing testimonies are real, and they happen every day. As we listen to the testimony of Minister Erica Alexander, you will understand why this great commission in Smyrna, Georgia, is doing such a wonderful job. Praise God, church. I am thankful for the past turnaround conference. During the conference, Bishop Ola Afe prophesied that many people would secure new jobs, Others will be promoted on their jobs, while others will get pay raises. I am here today to testify of the manifestation of that word in my life. My boss called me into a meeting last Friday and told me that I've been promoted and it comes with a pay raise. I give God all the praise and adoration for confirming the word of his servant in my life. Amen. Life-changing testimonies are happening at the Household of Faith for All Nations. 
As we listen to the testimony of Brother Seth Akra, you will understand why the servants of God are doing work in this great commission. Praise God, saints. I bless the name of the Lord for his goodness and kindness to my family. Reverend Mrs. Ola Afe always says that the God of this commission will bless you. I can say that indeed the God of Hoffman is blessing us already. Ever since my family and I came into this commission, we have been enjoying abundant blessing. I am grateful to God for a wonderful birthday celebration and God exceeded our expectations. Bishop also came for the birthday celebration. It was indeed a surprise to us and we thank God and appreciate Bishop Ola Afi for the show of love demonstrated to all our church family. God bless you all. So it is true that the God of this commission is doing us good. Amen. The household of faith for all nations, the home of signs and wonders. Come and experience the wonderful working power of the word of God. There is a miracle with your name on it. Remember, Jesus is Lord. men said to him you have to remain in this situation you have to go through the same challenge go through the same trials go through the same rot but he said no he called on Jesus and Jesus stood still and the good news is that when Jesus stood still everyone that was around him stood still when God focuses on you when you get God's attention your world will attend to you but look at something very profound in Mark chapter 10 as we read this story to get an insight to what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Verse 49, And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he called thee. And he, casting away his garment, that was a man ready to embrace opportunity. He knew he wasn't going back to where he has been before. You have to burn the bridge between you and 2014 because your past is your history. Your future is your destiny. No matter what shame, what reproach, what pain you have, you have, you have gone through in 2014, you gotta forget about the regret of yesterday. Ditch the regret of yesterday. Dump it and be looking to what God has in store for you because yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is your future. And I want to prophesy that your future is colorful. It is bright. You will get there in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He cast away his garment. He rose and came to Jesus. Oh, there are so many things I can tell about this man. The man was blind. He didn't go to Peter. He didn't go to the disciples. He went to Jesus and he didn't miss his way. Hmm. The deep colored to the deep. When your heart is connected to God, you will find him. Even in the dark places of life, you might not be able to see anything. You might not be able to see the ditch before you, but you will not miss where the master is. You will not miss your savior. You will not miss your help. You will not miss your strength. That's why I, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. I know help cometh from the Lord. And when God calls you, hallelujah. But look at something here. The Bible says, and Jesus answered. And said unto him, verse 51, What will thou that I should do unto thee? What should I do for you? Blind Bartimaeus knew exactly what he wanted. He said to Jesus, That I might receive my sight. The question the Holy Spirit is throwing 
at you this hour is do you know what you want do you know what kind of change you truly desire in your life in the coming year yes. most people only have a vague idea of their desire and that is why they never pursue it with the same vigor that blind patrimonials pursue this because they don't really know what they want as we go into the coming year, most of us truly want a change in our lives, I believe. Most people want a divine touch. They want a visitation in their situation. But they've not been able to adequately define what kind of touch, what kind of change they want. That issue has to be settled before God can do anything for you. But unfortunately, most of us have not settled those questions yet. If God is asking you tonight and he's going to be asking us in a moment, what do you want me to do for you in 2015? Blind Bartimaeus said that I might receive my sign. God cannot move on our behalf. God cannot help us until we have desires. In Psalm, 34, Psalm 37 verse 4, he said, delight yourself in the Lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart. Amen. What do you desire in 2015? Have you figured that out yet already in your heart? Have you made a list yet? God cannot go to work until he knows what you want in details. Because God calls us to dream with him. He wants to give us our desires. He wants to fulfill our desire. That is what he wants to grant. <laughs> you might be saying, God surely know what I need. Yeah, God does know. But God does not know if you really need it or want it. Like he thinks you or he thinks you do. Let me ask you a question. Didn't Jesus know that blind Bartimaeus was blind? But how come we was asking him, what do you want me to do for you? Shouldn't he just have known that he was blind? Of course, what will a blind man need? Other than eyes. Jesus might not want eyes. I pray for people who are in the wheelchair and I say, I want to pray for you to be healed. Say, I don't want to be healed. Just pray for me that I, I sit comfortably in this chair. I met somebody somewhere and he said, a loved man of one, a, a, a loved one of mine is sick. Can you come and pray for him? I said, when I pray, it's going to be healed. He said, no, we don't want you to pray for him to be healed. We just want him to die well. <laughs> no, I kid you not. So God doesn't know what you need. God, give me a husband. Yes. What kind of husband? A stingy, wicked, unconsidered man. So you got to tell him the details. Blam Batmaya said that I may receive my sight. That is why, as a commission, we're going to give you a desired blessing and petition sheet shortly to help you to itemize your desire to God. What you desire, it will enable you to dream with God. I want to admonish you to dream big. Amen. Expect much. Amen. Aspire for plenty. I want you to long for more as you get that desire sleep and begin to feel because our God is an efficient 320 God. God can do exceeding abundantly far above all you may ever ask or think but the power to make it work is in you. Amen. And that power is your desire. Amen. God calls us to a season of re a, a relationship of reasoning. God says, come, let us reason together. Isaiah 118. 
What do you want, Blam Bartimaeus? God is asking you in 2015. You know, somebody said, what if my desire is not in the will of God? God didn't say he will grant you your desire according to his will. It, once you are a child of God, your desires are God-born. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, he that is born of God cannot sin. There was, we notice someone else in scripture who initiated his own change through prayer. That man's name is called Jabez. I'm sure you'll have heard of him. He will have lived very close to you somewhere in your scripture. Under your pillow. Because his story is in your Bible. Praise the Lord. But Jabez will not allow his situation to keep him down, to hold him back. Just like blind Bartimaeus. He will not allow the opinion of man to keep him back from God's best. The Bible said his mother named him Jabez because she bare him in sorrow. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9. But he said, it doesn't matter what people call me. It doesn't matter what my mother called me. It doesn't matter what they thought of me. I'm going to embrace responsibility for my change. I'm not going to die in sorrow. I'm not going to live in sorrow year in, year out. I'm not going to stay sorrowful all my lifetime. I know my story can change. And I know he that can change my story. The Bible says he called on the God of Israel. And the Bible says he itemized his desires to God. Look at verse 10. And he said, Oh, that thou willest bless me, not just any blessing. Give me an indeed blessing. A blessing that cannot be overturned. A blessing that cannot be overlooked. A blessing that cannot be ignored. A blessing that men will say God has blessed him indeed. Amen. And enlarge my course. And let your hand be with me. Keep me from evil that he may not grieve me. And God, what granted him that which he requested? Amen. The God that is able to do exceedingly granted him that which he requested. I want to prophesy that in 2015, God will be granting your heart desires. He will be granting your requests. So ask big and I want you to dream large. Expect more. Aspire for more. Don't go on the low places. Anna was another woman in scripture who initiated a much desired change. After she has suffered the mockery and the torment of Penana her made for so long. Her family kept going to Shiloh year after year. So year was changing after year. But her story stayed the same. You can be going from one year to the other and still continue to go to the same issue. Go to the same situation. Experience the same challenge. That was what Anna was going through year after year. For Samuel chapter 3, 1 verse 3. And her story wasn't changing. But every change of year was an opportunity that God was giving to her. Amen. God was giving her an opportune moment. But she has to embrace the responsibility. And this year was a different year for Anna. Because when they went to Shiloh, everybody had eaten and drunk. The Bible says in verse 9, Anna rose up and went to a place and camped with God. She went to the altar of God. She went to an altar of encounter. And she met with God on the altar of prayer. And she made her petition to God. And told God what she wanted. God, I don't want to remain in the same situation. I don't want to come back again next year with the same challenge. I don't want to come back with the same issue. I want a change of story. After they have eaten in Shiloh and after they have drunk, Anna went and began, she began to pray. Look at verse number 10. Look at how he said, the Bible says, and she was in bitterness of heart and she prayed unto the Lord and what? And wept sore. You know what, pray, what praying and weeping sore means? God, it's either you bless me or I die here. 
That was what Jacob said. I won't let you go. Except my story change. That wasn't a church religious prayer. That wasn't a psychedelic. You know, the church has become so religious. You know, that's why we go to church. You want to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for today. Oh, the, the thing has not pinched you. You're not feeling the heat yet. That's why you're still praying that kind of prayer. You like where you are. You don't desire a change as much as God will expect that you desire. The Bible says, blind Bartimaeus, they said, told him to keep quiet. He cried the more a great deal. Anna prayed so. Even the pastor thought she was drunk. She prayed on, as if she has lost her mind. She prayed until she lost her voice. Her voice was no longer heard. But she kept praying. I'm not going to let anything keep me back from my breakthrough. Even if I have no voice, I'm still going to continue to mutter inaudible words to my God because my story must change. And look at what she said. The Bible says, after she had prayed, she upgraded her prayer with a vow. Didn't God know what she needed all these years? Huh? Didn't he know? But God wants us to walk together with him. If you can dream with God, your change will manifest. If you can dream with God, your story will change. The Bible says she upgraded a, a prayer with a vow. She vowed a vow and said, Lord, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of the handmaid, the affliction of the handmaid, and remember me and forget not the handmaid, but give unto me a man child. She didn't ask for a lady. She didn't ask for a girl. Man child. Specific. And the Bible says, I will give him to the Lord. You see, child of God, you can power up your prayer and petition. You can pray, but you can take your prayer to the next level with a vow. You have to embrace the responsibility for the change you want. You can make a pledge to the Lord. Lord, this is what I will give to you if you bless me. If you roll away my reproach, I will serve you. If you bless me indeed, I will sow to your kingdom. I will give my time to you. I will give my talent to you. I will give my life to you. I will give you my resources. This is my place for you. Are you attempting to buy a miracle? Sure, no. But you are initiating a spiritual transaction that God never ignores. You have been listening to our very own presiding bishop, Bishop Ola Wale Ole Ofe of the Household of Faith for All Nations, a man anointed by God. We believe that this empowering word has blessed your heart. If you would like to pray with us, please call our It Shall Be Done prayer line at 770-805-9100 or 770-892-8268. Eight two six eight. If you would like to order any of these life-changing messages from this great servant of God, go online to our website at www.hoffin.org. Or if you would like to plant your financial seed on the fertile soil of this great commission, you can do so online at www.hoffin.org. Or by sending your financial seed through U.S. mail to Post Office Box 265, Austell, Georgia 301. Six, eight. And may God bless you. We extend an invitation from our church. Let us connect each week for our life powerful, dynamic, life changing, destiny molding services. We are conveniently located at 2435 Dixie Avenue, Smyrna, Georgia 30080. We have two powerful services one at 9 30 a.m., and our second service is at 11 30 a.m. Our Wednesday miracle service and Bible study is held at 7.30 p.m. And thank God for Friday because we have our intercessory prayer meeting every Friday at 7.30 p.m. For more information, please check our website at www.hoffin.org or call 770-805-9100. And we will see you there in Jesus' name.